In this session of Normal Flex, we're going to be looking at actually bringing data in from source and staging it into Snowflake. So what we're going to go through is we're just going to look at um, incorporating data and bringing data into the cloud, the couple of different options that you have there. We're going to look at how we've built the source to staging Snowflake template and um, some of the challenges we faced and how we've addressed that. And then I'm going to show you how we uh, just go into Normal Flex and actually show you a demo there right quick. So first, let's look at incorporating data. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using our Excel add-in and connect to a data source. And we're going to use the same sample data source that Snowflake uses um, because later on in our next sessions, when we look at our data vault and data mart templates, we will be looking at you know, using our templates and running it against last data set. We're going to bring in some source metadata. We get, that metadata gets published to a metadata repository in the back end. And then from that metadata repository in the back end, we're actually going to go ahead and um, pull that metadata into Normal Studio and build out the Snowflake code and just put, point it out. It's really as simple as that. But first, let's just look at how uh, Bimble Flex works and how we're going to get in the data into Snowflake. So the first thing we do is we pull the data from whichever data source you have. We pull the metadata in from there and it gets published into a metadata repository where all the data mappings are being done in the back end there. We're not going to be looking at Data Vault Accelerator or any, applying any business rules in this session. That's for a different session. Then what we can do with that metadata, you can choose to go down an on-premise route, route where you normally go from source to sta um, targets in um, from a database to a database. Or you can just go and say, let's let's take it up into the Azure cloud here. Or we can go now go into the Snowflake um, you know, Snowflake data warehouse here, and we only support right this release. We're just doing the source of staging, um, and we are working on our data vault templates and our data mart templates. So we're going to be focusing on bringing the data into Snowflake over here. So what Bill Flex will do right now, what we're going to be looking at, and we're just focusing on Snowflake right now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move data from data sources. We're going to put that data into a Snowflake stage first. And then we're going to load it into staging and persistent staging. So we're going to really stop over at this slope here. Just to be, let you know, so, uh, switching on persistent staging with history um, or without history, that, those are the optional settings that you can do in Bumble Flex. So you could actually just go from source into staging and then take that data going forward. But for now, we're going to just put it into a persistent staging or historized staging database and then later on as we bring those templates for snowflake on board those templates already exist for or um, azure sql data warehouse and sql vms and also any other um, database source that or target that you want to do so yeah, let's look at what does a snowflake template before i jump into code and and metadata and show you how it works let me just explain to you the process of the snowflake template so the first thing we want to do here is we want to be able to um, connect to multiple sources. So we're going to extract the data from from you know, any source that we, you can really think of. Um, and that data gets extracted into a file. That file can be parallelized or we can put it across multiple threads. In other words, you could have a table and I'll show this how easy we've uh, implemented this in the Bimble Flex. You can have a table that is quite large and instead of pushing all of that data into a single file and up uploading that single file into P Snowflake stage, we take that um, file and we can split it across multiple smaller files which gives you um, it's almost linear the amount of performance that gives you when you load that data into snowflake so how does it, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the data out we're going to prepare it we're going to convert it to utf8 and we're going to compress it and this uh, i can put this bit over here we actually use snow sql um, which is the utility provided by snowflake that data then gets conf um, copied up we into Snowflake stage. The reason we at Virgin has decided to support Snowflake stage first is because then you don't have to worry about whether you are using AWS or whether you're using Azure. It goes into Snowflake stage and then from there we load it into the database. That is also what we, um, in our conversations with Snowflake, that the, the process that they recommend. And from there, once it's in Snowflake stage, we will copy, uh, kick off um, um, the SQL, the ELT code um, on top, and uh, we will copy the data out of the files into a staging data, uh, into a staging table. And if we'll, we we will have persistent staging configured, um, so we will also load that into a persistent staging in the same process. And then really the data is ready for discovery. You can then put virtual um, discovery marts over the top of it, or the data from this sort of staging persistent staging later is now ready to move into your data vault or your data marts whichever the process that you want to do over here. 
but I'll show you how quickly, quick and easy it is to get your data into Snowflake and actually start doing some you know, discovery on your data. So without further ado, let's jump straight into a bit more Flex demo and I'll take you through this. All right, so as I said, we're gonna use our Excel add-in and we're gonna connect to a source system metadata. Here. Before I connect to that, let me just take you through what, what, what um, configuration options you may ha you have at this stage here. So here I've defined a source connection of, you know, we're gonna pull some data out of a SQL server. Um, there's some more metadata on the right, which I'm not gonna focus on right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say this is the record source TCPH, which is the Snowflake sample database. We are gonna persist history. So if you didn't want to he have a historized um, uh, staging layer or historized persistent staging layer, you would leave that as blank or no. And then this is quite important here. This is the number of threads. So think about number of threads at this connection level of how many files do I want to create in parallel? You could make this 16, 32, whatever. I've left it as four, just so I can show you. It's easier to show it as four. So that's the first one there, the number of threads. The second thing, uh, threading option you have here is at the batch level here, where you can go ahead and actually say, well, how many threads do I want to run in parallel? So this means how many source tables do I want to extract in parallel? So I'm gonna make this two over here, and I'm just gonna go and publish that metadata there. So that metadata is now persisting in our database. And then, you know, the last thing here is uh, really at a connection level here. Um, what we're saying is we, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but what we're doing is we're saying, um, I want to go from this source and the source metadata here, I want to stage it. I also want to persist it. And eventually I'm going to put that in a data vault, which is outside of the scope of this uh, presentation here. So the first thing I need to do here now uh, and imagine here that you're starting off, you want to get some data into Snowflake. The first thing you want to do is you want to bring some metadata in. So I'm just going to go in here. Um, again, we have a video that just focuses on uh, importing metadata. But for now, I'm just going to go here. I'm going to select all of the tables that I want to bring in here. And I'm going to do a couple of settings down the bottom here. Don't worry about it too much. Um, and I'm going to hit import metadata. This now brings in all the tables for me. It has also brought in all the column metadata for me. And if your system has relationships in the system, it would have brought in, oops, one to many, it would bring in your relationships also there. And it would have bring it, brought in some additional metadata here, covered in detail in other, in other webinars here. So that's all I need to do. So let's just say you have a really good clean system that has primary keys, that has relationships and foreign keys and all that kind of stuff that you know, is easy for Bumbleflex to interpret. We've brought in that metadata and that's all we need to do. Now we head over to Bubble Studio, which is where the code is built out. So Bubble Flex, the Excel add-in is where you um, manage your metadata. Bubble Studio is where the code gets built out here. So all I need to do at this stage is hit the refresh metadata button. And now it pulls all of that metadata that I've just published in Excel into my database. It pulls that down. And as you can see here, um, I'm creating multiple files here four files here for everything here but let me just say the line item table here is quite big and instead of four files there i want to make that let's just say eight files it's quite easy i'll just go over to my metadata here to the objects and right at the end of this uh, metadata here uh, a little bit too far right at the end of this metadata here i have another uh, number of threads here which i can make eight so if i make this eight and set it so again i can control the number of files or threads that I wanna produce at a connection level for all the tables in that connection, and I can override it selectively at a object level here. So if I refresh metadata here, what you'll see now is that this line item here will become eight files. Okay, I will now also have all of the tables that I need to create for my Snowflake database, as well as the t packages here. So the only thing that's left up for me to do now is to create my tables on the Snowflake side. So I go to generate scripts here and I say generate my Snowflake table script, which is going to give me my source to staging scripts. Now we are still working with Snowflake and working on this where we can actually um, get the continuous deployment um, worked out and figured out for Snowflake. At the, uh, Snowflake doesn't have a, a sort of a DAC pack deployment or incremental deployment stuff. So we're still working through that a little bit at the moment. But ultimately, you know, I've got no tables here on my Snowflake. I just want to run all the queries and I hit run. And this will now go ahead and create all of the tables that I need for my staging layer and my persistent staging layer here. So that just goes ahead here and just runs that up. 
and there we're done so if i refresh on this side here there is all of my staging tables that i need and all of my persistent staging tables ods now don't worry too much about the naming there is many different ways that you configure the naming conventions inside of um, bullflex so for now all i need to go ahead now here is go ahead and just hit the build button and this is going to build all the packages and then i'll take you through what those packages look like and some of the technical things that we had we from Virgins had to solve all right so the build has been completed successfully so let me head over to visual studio here and just show you what the package looks like now remember the first thing i want to show you is that we um, created two threads on the batch so if i look at the batch here that's going to execute it we will see here that it's going to have two packages that's going to get executed in parallel so we've got two packages that gets executed in parallel and this could be as many packages as you want in your batch um, and then let's look at a package here and then i'll just kick it off and let it run and get the data up there so what does the package look like itself so here we go so the first bit here is there's some orchestration to see whether the package should run or not then there's a data flow task that very simply just goes and gets the data connects to your source comes down here and then literally just puts it into as many files as you've defined through so if this was 18 or 16 it'll have 16 or 32 of these files here very simple process remember all we're trying to do here is get some data out put it into a file do some yeah, preparation of the file there the next thing we do here is we actually convert the file to utf8 now this is very important um, sorry this is very important for azure sql data warehouse and but it's also important for snowflake so it really just gets the file into the right format then we use snow sql to copy the file and compress the file into um, snowflake stage and then here is the i suppose the magic um, that um, we've done from bumbleflex um, a virgin's point of view is we actually had to create a custom uh, SSI's custom task to go and load the data out one of the um when working with snowflake one of the things about their api and their odbc api is that you can only uh, make one call um, at a time and if you wanted to call a multiple so if, you, if i just show you here real quick um, i'll just look at the variable here so the snowflake code that we want to execute um, on the on the server is, is quite a, a chunky piece of code here right so i'll just grab this out, out here um, because we need to go and do some do quite a bit of things in the context of um, identifying uh, deltas and all kinds of stuff here but um, as you can see there's 205 lines of codes and there's multiple statements there that we need to do and to get the data into stage and to do persistent stage with history or without history all of that stuff is, is logic that we need to do so we needed a mechanism inside of ssis to orchestrate that code there so what we've done is we've basically written a ssis custom task that virgin has written and then we do some housekeeping where we remove the files um, over here so let me go ahead here and just execute this um, and let it run and then i'll show you the results on the other side here so now i'm just going to go and execute this this packages here and let it run all right so this bit over here is actually using snowy scale and as you can see here it's take moving the data up and compressing it in flight and moving the data up into snowflake stage so as you can see there it's also compressing the data as it goes up into snowflake all right so the packages have completed successfully so now what we should be able to see here is in my um, databases here I will have in my Bumbleflex database here I should be able to see all of my tables and the data has been populated in all of those tables there so thank you for watching this session um, I do hope to see you in the next session where we actually will be once we have our data vault and the data mart templates we will show you how that works thank you